Hello, everyone, and welcome to VMBlog's coverage of the KubeCon Cloud Native Con event, which is taking place in Chicago this year. And today we're joined by Sean O'Mara, the field CTO at Marantis. Sean, thanks for joining us today. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, so why don't we just kick things off and maybe if you could just give us a, a quick overview of Marantis. Right. So Marantis has had a long history of working with large enterprise customers using open source software and open source solutions and contributing heavily to the open source community to deliver unique solutions for our customer base. Um, we focus heavily on some of the top financial businesses, telco businesses in the world, um, and have had a great history of developing from the OpenStack days right through our to into the Kubernetes market and a lot of focus when we bought the Docker business in 2019. Now, talking about uh, KubeCon and the upcoming event, um, where does your company fit within the ecosystem? So, you know, as I mentioned, we have a long history with the container ecosystem. Um, we bought in the Docker uh, enterprise business in 2019, so very much part of the DNA of the company. Prior to that, Marantis had been heavy contributors in the early days of Kubernetes itself. Um, and we've continued to develop and build products around the container ecosystem um, and contribute to the CNCF. Um, with newer products like Lens, which makes it much more accessible, and we've solved containers at scale for many of the biggest enterprises in the world. Um, you know, we've got companies running 85,000 transactions an hour plus on systems that we support and maintain for them um, with our support organization. Now, for attendees of, uh, of the KubeCon event, maybe you could talk about some of the types of problems that Marantis solves for them or maybe get into some of the specific use cases. Yeah, sure, I'd love to. You know, we we cover quite a wide, wide range of container platform challenges um, from uh, our MKE product set, which is focused on providing Kubernetes platforms on premise. Um, you know, we're very much focused and have been focused traditionally on the infrastructure side of things. But in the last few years, we've moved up into the application stack. So we're solving for components like a golden path with Lagoon and the Amazie.io components. Um, providing for those golden path patterns of development for developers. We're solving the challenge of ease of use and the learning curve complexity of Kubernetes. C Kubernetes is complex. I think everybody's agreed to that. The learning curve is high for developers. Um, our products like Lens, Lens just makes it so much more accessible. It means you don't have to spend your life using kubectl um, and learning the ins and out of Kubernetes to become effective and to utilize container environments. Um, other products we're solving for development and platform teams to contain sprawl over the multi-cloud um, with our Lens App IQ components. Really just focused on how do we make it easier to use primarily how do we get the developer world and DevOps teams easier to use Kubernetes? And then how do we solve those infrastructure management challenges across the multi-cloud, especially when you consider that everybody these days is moving into using multiple Kubernetes providers, both public and private cloud providers to solve their use cases. Now, would it be possible for you to give us kind of a rundown of your company's technology offerings and also what is it that makes your product or products unique and differentiated in the market? Sure. So I think I'll focus pretty much here. What we're going to be talking about a lot of what's happening at KubeCon this this year. You know, we've got a broad range of products aimed at the enterprise um, and at the small small business usage. Um, I think our key products that we're going to be focusing on this year is K zeros. Um, K zeros is our unique take on providing a commoditized Kubernetes distribution. Um, we have both an open and a supported version of that. And, and the key thing behind K zeros, the key bit of technology in that is we are delivering it as a single binary. So a Kubernetes distribution as a single binary that can support both a single node cluster, you know, terrible way of putting it, but or thousands of nodes all from that single binary without having to manage any dependencies. Um, and one of the big challenges with keeping your Kubernetes clusters up to date, and we're talking the infrastructure side here, is managing all those dependencies. You know, 
what OS patch is needed today. And if we can contain all of that into one offering, we really solve the complexity problem for, for a lot of um, platform and operations teams. Layering on top of that, we are going to be talking a little bit more about this in a second, but Cosmotron, Cosmotron we're solving the multi-cloud problem for managing and containing Kubernetes clusters and where do you put the control plane? Um, you know, and I'll, we can talk a lot more about that, but ultimately the control plane is a resource overhead. Management of the control plane can be a technical challenge for a lot of organizations. Public clouds solve that by you know, treating the control plane ideally as as cattle rather than pets. Well, we've now moved that technology and taken that technology and made it available to people who want to build on-prem or want control of their control plane, bit of an oxymoron there, but and giving that control in and in the public cloud should they want to, and they can consume resources from anywhere. Going on to the earlier theme of simplicity, of course, um, you know, Lens for us is core to all of our offerings. Lens is the tool we're using to make Kubernetes more accessible, to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters in any CNCF approved Kubernetes platform. You know, so any CNCF certified Kubernetes platform, we can attach to it. And then with the Lens Pro offerings, we can start to share those lists of platforms, share the credentials, share the logons, um, and just make it easier for teams to work together in this multi-cloud environment. Um, so those are very much our open source focused areas. We have our Docker, what was Docker Enterprise, is now Marantis Kubernetes Engine, which is a key part of our business today. Um, and that's you know, really what a lot of the top big financials and telcos in the world that we deal with are running underneath their platforms today. Um, we're seeing a fantastic adoption with, with products like K0s and, and Cosmotron, which we'll talk about. Yeah, that, that's a, a, a great rundown of the technology, Sean. I appreciate that. Um, and I guess without asking you to uh, give away any uh, major secrets or whatnot, but if you could maybe talk a little bit about what new announcements you, you your company might be making uh, while at KubeCon. I'd love to. And I've alluded to it already. Um, we, we're going to be talking about Cosmotron going um, general availability, um, and we'll be offering full support for Cosmotron. Um, we've seen a lot of interest in what it can do. Uh, we've seen a lot of uptake. And for us, it's key as part of our sort of zero ops message for companies moving forward. Um, so we're going to make a big splash about Cosmotron. Um, we're hoping to see more companies adopting that sort of technology and using it to level the playing field um, as to how you manage Kubernetes in the multi-cloud environment. One of the big things uh, at KubeCon every year is the keynotes. And during the keynotes, there's a big focus on, you know, the big picture and the futures of Kubernetes. Um, what are some of the themes that Marantis is looking at or interested in moving into 2024? So a couple of key areas for us. Um, obviously, security is a major, major challenge for everybody. Um, and we're continuing to double down on our focus on security. You know, we were the first to have FIPS validation, um, 140-2 validation within our product many years ago, and we're continuing to double down on that. We're focusing on acquiring things like a st updated stig for our for our products to um, allow the federal market to have confidence in the products. We're starting to, to double down on technologies like AI. Um, so both from the perspective of how do we actually make AI accessible to the market you know, there's a lot of scuttlebutt about AI and what it can do, but a lot of people don't know how to get started with it. So we're simplifying the process of getting started with AI, as well as utilizing AI within our operations tooling and infrastructure to make a lot of the decision making easier. Um, and mostly just to help with that pattern recognition on very, very large scale deployments. Um, so more on the AI ops side of components. Um, Another big area for us is the simplification of operational management. And everybody talks about the new and the latest technologies, but businesses really need stability. They really need to ensure that their platforms and their infrastructure are hyper-stable and will support their needs. So a big part of the future for Marantis is how do we really make operations smooth and seamless? And giving back, we, we say giving back the gift of time to operations teams. So, so those are the trends for us 
that are most important um, as we look into the future. Now, obviously, uh, anyone who's uh, attending KubeCon, I, I highly recommend they come by the Marantis booth and and check out what you uh, all have to offer. But for folks who are watching this video at home and maybe can't get to uh, get to the show, is there any kind of a demo or something that you can show that gives uh, some you know visibility into what the product looks like? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, we can definitely throw put up a demo now. We'll show you how Cosmotron can be used with the cluster API to deploy new compute nodes um, from a cluster, so a new control control plane within seconds, and attached to workers, say in an um, AWS EKS cluster, and then use Lens to show you what that looks like, um, just to how simple it can be um, for a platform team to set that up for your team. So I can jump into that. Okay, we're going to give you a quick demo of using Cosmotron to deploy a new Kubernetes cluster with the control plane virtualized using Cosmotron and the compute node up in a Hetzner cloud node separated completely. So we're showing that the CAPI system is pre-deployed uh, as is Cosmotron, and we're going to utilize CAPI to manage those remote compute nodes. Right, so let's go and create the cluster. We're going to edit the YAML file that defines the configuration for the particular cluster. And that includes every detail of the various compute nodes, where we want the control plane to run, um, as well as details like the load balancer and IP addressing details. Okay, so let's apply that YAML file using kubectl. As you can see, it's quickly applied. And you can see that the cluster is busy provisioning, and the compute node is provisioning, it's pending provisioning, um, and the cloud machine, which is where the control plane is running, is up and running. The load balancer is up and provisioned and ready to go, and the pod containing the control plane is also up. The, the cluster is provisioned, waiting for the machine, or just a single compute node in this case. A few more seconds. And that should be completed. And there we go. It's up. See, it's ready to go. The cluster's up. All good. So let's grab the YAML file so we can put it inside Lens um, and attach to that cluster remotely and show you what's going on. There it is, cluster showing up in lens straight away. This is just attaching to it. There's the node. Obviously, no, not much running on at the moment. Some of the basic Kubernetes core components. He's pinned it. Now he's going to be able to show you what the cluster looks like. So we've got some statistics from the cluster, but not all of them. So he's going to go and add the lens capabilities so we get the Prometheus metrics um, and the stack metrics, which is busy doing. And awesome, we're starting to get the capabilities and show you what's inside that cluster. So new Kubernetes cluster, remote compute node, local virtualized Kubernetes control plane, all in under three minutes, with a little bit of work editing a few YAML files. And lastly, before we let you go, um... Where can people go if they want to find out more information about Mirantis and some of the things you talked about today? So the best place is our website, mirantis.com. Um, um, if you want to dig into our docs, docs.mirantis.com, we, we do everything as openly as possible. Mirantis.com um, will lead you to uh, the Lens website and the Lens details. For those of you who want to learn more about Lens, K8 Lens, um, and for those of you who want to look at Cosmotron, please just have a look up, look for Cosmotron. We'll be making a lot more splash about that. Great. Well, thanks for uh, taking the time to speak with VM Blog, and we look forward to seeing you at KubeCon. Usually appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and learn about what we're doing. Thank you. We'll see you there.